Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GADNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, it's Alex Bennett, and this of course is The Ramble, and The Ramble goes from now until midnight Eastern Daylight Time, uh, and uh, we're going to have our citizens panel in uh, just a little bit, okay? All right. You know, whenever we talk to Larry Bubbles Brown, we actually pre-record the thing, right, Larry? Yes, we do. So it's at a more convenient hour for you. Um, uh, I would put you live on the show, but I like to do these interviews in advance (laughs) because uh, we have a citizen panel, and it just somehow it doesn't work putting the uh, the guest on with the citizen panel. But maybe we'll try you some night just for the hell of it, you know. It'll be about you know seven thirty your time or whatever. But meanwhile, he's pre-recorded and because I'm so risky. <laughs> yeah, we do this about one o'clock in the afternoon. It's one twenty-five right now in the afternoon, and and after I'm through here, guess what I go do? You work out. That's correct, Larry. I work out, and you know something? I decided I fucking absolutely unequivocally hate working out Mm -hmm. and if i could say that i felt better as a result of it uh, i would be happy to sit here and tell you i i i realize the pain but there is gain and you know something i don't feel any better because i've worked out period that's it now, you don't know anymore whether you feel better. You know, know how bad you're going to feel if you don't run, right? Yeah, if I don't run, I get very depressed. And uh, Although after I run, I, now I'm feeling, you just feel sore and beat up. <laughs> so did, did, did you go run today? I'm going to run after we do this. Uh-huh, and you're going to run how far? Uh, six miles. Six miles. How long does that take? An hour. Really, and where, and what, what do, you, do you have a do you have a route that you take? Pretty much, it's through Fort Mason and then out towards Chrissy Field and back. Yeah, you know your old your old neighborhood actually. What I used to do on my I used to have a bicycle and I would bicycle all the way out in, in uh, along the the water. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what that's called. Maybe that is Chrissy Field. I don't know. That's Chrissy Field. Yeah. yeah. And I would, and then I would go over and and actually bicycle to the bridge, to the place where Kim Novak jumped in the water in Vertigo. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I run right. Yeah, I run to there. Right? Yeah, and then I would come back. So I guess you do the, exactly the same route. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, although now you couldn't probably do it now because there's like lift ten thousand bicycles now. Like, uh, oh. The number of bicycles running around is incredible. Oh, really? It's terrible. Because huh? yeah. I was like the only one, you know. Yeah, I and mean, now they're just literally thousands of them when I run on the weekend. Mm. God, if I went back to San Francisco, I would probably hate it. Yeah, you'd get run over by bikes and skateboards and scooters and. Yeah, uh, all with a Google decal on them. With the Google decal, you. You'd be stepping in human feces and syringes. You wouldn't like it here. Tell me about those people. Tell me about the the Googles and the Tweeters, uh, the the people who work at Twitter, and the, are they are they all assholes? That's what I've heard. They all live in they live in the city, and then the Google in these places they have these gigantic buses that pick them up and take them to work down in San Jose. And they have a reputation, well, they've driven the rents up through the roof, and uh, they just have a reputation for not being the nicest people. Apparently, they make so much money, but apparently they don't tip. (laughs) That's what waitresses have told me. Wow. Now, here's the thing that I, you know, I mean, um, uh, this whole thing has been a a major detriment to uh, San Francisco. I mean, they've all come in. The rents have gone sky high, 
And I've heard, and this was a statistic I heard, that uh, the edge of low earning, okay, in other words, where l l the low edge of, of, of low earning uh, is one hundred six thousand dollars a year in San Francisco now. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. So you are what poverty stricken? I would be in poverty, but I guess rent control has saved me. So. Y yeah. How does that rent control work with you there? I know how it works here because I've had to do great studying on it since I'm involved in a in a lawsuit here yeah you're but. going through that well i moved here i moved in this unit in the 80s and the rent was 250 and it goes up they're allowed to raise the rent by the uh, inflation rate i think it's usually about one percent a year so they you're paying now do you start out at 250 in the 80s and that's by yeah the now, now it's actually now i'm paying of course, I got the garage now, which is 150 so three, four. So the, the rent is now about doubled in 30 years. So, so you're paying 500 a month? 500 for the rent and 150 for the garage. That's, you're, you're, you're living large, aren't you? Yeah, and the, the place across from me, the, without the garage, was they were advertising that for 3200 Wow! Now you're are you a studio apartment or one bedroom? Yeah, it's a studio. So, it's but is is the apartment house a nice apartment house? It's nice. It's in the marina. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. So you know, you moved in there the year that I came to work in San Francisco, or about the year I came to work in San Francisco. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's uh, let's see what you care. What happens though? If you if I would. To move out of this unit, it would no longer be rent controlled, and they could charge what they wanted for it. So, are they coming and knocking on your door every other day? No, you would think they would be, but they haven't. So. Or, or if if something goes wrong with the apartment, do they take forever to fix it? Yeah, but uh, they're pretty good about that. But there are there are buildings in the city where, like, if if they're in a spot like me, they do have landlords harassing them and or offering them money to leave. Oh, my neighbor. More. My neighbor was offered eighty thousand to leave ten years ago, but she didn't take. You, it. Have you ever been offered money to leave? I, they never offered me money. I'd kind of like. I'm bored living here. I'd kind of like to get out of here. Yeah, but you know something. If if they gave you eighty thousand dollars, that wouldn't take very take you very far. It wouldn't take you very far. It's uh, you know it's a couple of years rent across the street. You know. So uh, you're better off staying where you are. Can you sublet? No, that would be, uh, they'd like me to try that because that's absolute grounds for eviction. Oh, really? Because here in New York, you're, a landlord cannot prevent you from subletting. Really? But wow. there are rules about subletting. For instance, if I sublet this apartment, well, I can't because I'm, it, actually, that's the crux of the argument we're having right now. Is that he he sublet it to me without telling me it was a sublet? He told me it was a rental. All right, I signed a rental agreement. I didn't sign a mm -hmm. sublet agreement. And what happens is, if you sublet an apartment, you can't sublet it for more than you're paying for it. In other words, you can't make a profit out of it. And the only thing you can add on to it is if it comes with furniture, you can add ten percent. But you can't do, for instance, what this guy did. He was paying like $2,200 a month, and he charged us $4,200 a month. And that's against the law. Okay? But we didn't realize that because we thought he owned the place or something, you know, because he, he was renting it to us. And, um, um, you know, so, and, and the penalty for that, and that's what we're in court for, among other things. It's a very complicated case. The, the penalty for that is he has to pay us the difference, which would be about $2,000 a month, for 32 months. Wow. Plus treble damages. So he has to pay three times what we were overcharged for that 32 months. Holy cow, that's some dough. Well, it you know, it comes to... Uh, uh, oh, hell, uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to figure out. It comes out to about 100000 bucks that alone but that's not the only the only thing here i mean he's suing the landlord for the same thing so if they 
say he wins with the landlord and that his his actual rent was lower then our actual repay would go higher you get what i'm saying yeah so uh it's it's a whole but in new york there are very strict rules about rentals a thing called rent stabilization which this is a rent stabilized apartment house even though they then go and refurbish all the apartments and then charge seven thousand dollars a month for them okay that they can do under rent stabilization but uh, rent stabilization, you, you, you can only raise the rent a certain amount, uh, and it's, it's pretty good. There was a thing that was called rent control before that, and some of these apartments in this building are rent controlled, and that went as far as, number one, the rates couldn't go up more than a certain amount every couple of years, uh, and uh, more than that, if you died, you could will your lease to your heirs. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, oh, there was wow. a, there's a woman downstairs who, who was brought up in this apartment house, and her, her mother died and left her the apartment. She had to go to court and fight for it, but she finally won it. And I think she's paying 500 bucks a month in rent. In a building that all the a lot of the other apartments go as high as like seven thousand dollars a month. So, wow, that's great! Oh yeah, it's terrific. Yeah. So this uh, this thing you've been going through has been going on forever, right? We are going into as of August first. We were five years. Five years, I guess. Five years of not paying rent. You know. So. Uh, who knows? And, and and the judge has taken forever to come up with some determination on something that doesn't even have to do with the final dispensation of the of the claim. So, so yeah. giving you any idea when this might be resolved? Oh, I I think uh, I'm hoping before my death. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't look good. You know, uh, in the in the meantime, we're not paying rent. You're living rent free. Well, that's uh, yeah. Let's and what we'll we're drag it out forever. Is, then. is it once we it, it, we're going to win this thing because uh, every law I ever read was that it's on our side. But also the guy who was renting here is also suing the landlord, so it's a three-way deal. And what mm -hmm. we're asking for is what we're by right supposed to have, which is the current rent stabilized price for this apartment, which would probably be about fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a month. You know. Which, if we then make a lot of money, we can pay that, and it's no big problem. But, you know, in New York, there's a lot more protection than you have in San Francisco. Yeah, I, it's a little I, flimsy out here. The, uh, I know they're trying to pass. There's something on the state ballot this year that's going to be they're trying to get rent control over more of the state because uh, there's some law that prevents most of the cities from enacting rent control and and they'd like all of them to be able to enact rent control yeah yeah um it's becoming it's becoming scary it's so expensive that nobody can afford to rent a place well our good friend stephen pearl uh, oh yeah yeah is moving to vegas that's right because he can't afford the uh Rents? Where is he? He's like in. He's in Walnut Creek, and I think his building is either getting sold or something. So, and there's no rent control out there, so he's screwed. So. Wow. So you know, I mean, and if we had to move, I don't think it. Let's say we were kicked out of this apartment. It's not going to happen, but let's say we were. Uh, uh, we couldn't afford to buy rent another apartment in New York City. It'd be impossible. You know. So how far would you have to go to find a place? I I think we probably have to go up to um, Vermont. Uh, uh, yeah, somewhere like that. Yeah, yeah. No, we'd have to. We definitely have to move out of the city. There's no question about it. Yeah. I mean, it's just gotten impossible here. You know. And now, granted, I don't think the cost of an apartment in New York is not as high as the cost of the apartment in uh, San Francisco right now. From what I hear. That's unbelievable. Yeah. And you would think, yeah, hey, New York, biggest city in America, sure, it would be the most expensive here, and then the second most expensive would be L.A., and then the third most expensive would be uh, Chicago, and the fourth most expensive would be San Francisco. 
No, mm -hmm. San Francisco, I think, is more expensive than any of those cities now. Yeah. And it's because of all those fucking yuppie fucks that moved into... <laughs> yeah, <you know>. fuck. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, why, and why, you know, I well, Twitter opened up an office in San Francisco. In fact, the place that used to be our radio studio is now right. Twitter. Right, they got the big logo there. Yeah, that's Twitter. Uh, I think Google hasn't moved up, and neither has uh, Apple or anybody like that. They might have little satellite offices. Yeah, in Google's in Mountain View, and uh, Apple's got a huge building in Cupertino. But they offered to, to run buses to San Francisco every day to take their people down. Yeah, they got these huge buses, and they pick people up. And, uh... and they, the, the fact that they made that available is what fucked up San Francisco. Yeah. Because, well, who wants to live in San Mateo if you can live in San Francisco, right? Mm-hmm. No. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's, it, it's terrible what's happened to San Francisco, and I wish I, I, wish I could sit here and say uh, uh, I, I don't feel, you know, I don't feel bad about it because I'm not there, but I do feel bad about it because I would like to go back there sometime. You know, that's my home. That's where I was born. But if I moved and went to San Francisco, I couldn't afford San Francisco. My apartment, which I was paying, what was I paying, $2,500 a month, I think I was paying for mine. Yeah, at the time, that seemed like a lot of money to me. But now it'd be, it would be double that or more. It, probably it's up around $4,000, 4500 uh, Hey, that, in the year, that was pretty big. That's probably 5000 Probably 5000 for that yeah. little apartment? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And well, I read the the average Facebook employee. I think the salary is two hundred and forty thousand. Average Facebook employee. That's the average. That's what I heard. Yeah. What the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> I know. And they probably have an HR that can't deal. You know, doesn't deal with age discrimination because they're they don't want to have to. Well, they got enough problems already with the fucking Russians. Yes. You know. I love the tech industry is supposedly more age discriminatory than show businesses. Uh, really? They are, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. Of course. You know. Uh, well, uh, but I'm surprised they're paying that kind of money. All right, because when you've got a bunch of young people, those fucks are willing to work for anything. Yeah. You know. So, uh, but you you actually heard that it's what two hundred fifty thousand is. Oh, that's all I read. Two forty, two forty. Really? It was the average? Son of a gun! They must they must be pissing money. <laughs> well, not, there's a lot of money in stealing data. I guess. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of money in stealing data. Yeah. Now we know. All these years, we kept saying, "How can they do this for free?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How? I wonder how they can do this for free. Hmm. Well, as long as they're doing it for free, I guess I'll take it, you know. I went on to Google the other day, and they had a thing called Google Photos, where you can upload all your photos to Google mm -hmm. to the cloud. So I clicked on it, and it started download, uploading all my pictures from my machine up to the cloud. And I'm trying to figure out, how, how are they making money off of this, you know? They're using up all that data space and so on for my pictures. Well, they say to begin with, they don't store them at a high definition. They store them at a medium resolution, okay? And that's free. But if you want them in high resolution, you got to then pay for it. Okay. All right? Okay, so that, that kind of makes sense. But I'm also thinking about what are they doing with, with my fucking photos, you know? Uh are, are they, you know, gonna gonna sell my photos to somebody? I mean, have we been so naive that we felt all these services were absolutely free? Now you don't use Facebook, really. No, I do. I do a little. Yeah. Well, you have to do a little because it takes you so long to do it. Yeah. Because you've got that dial-up. Well, they got this thing, it's called M Facebook now for people on dial up. So my Facebook is actually one of the things on the computer that moves pretty quickly. <laughs> it's called what? M Facebook? M Facebook, yes. Well, I'll have to try that. So, uh, but anyway, um, 
uh, it, it, you know, uh, the dial-up thing is, um, what was I going to say? Oh, so anyway, so you, you wonder, you know, how Facebook was making money. And I figured it was those ads, you know, the little ads on the side and so on, you know. And I don't mind them doing that. I don't mind the clutter of ads if right. it means that, you know, I'm getting this service for free. But um, all of a sudden we, we find out that the reason why it was for free is that nothing's free, that they were using your data, your information, your um, uh, information about age and things like that uh, for, uh, for uh, um, to sell to people. So... The idea that we were getting any of this stuff for free was ridiculous. Yes, Facebook was totally free when I joined it. They weren't stealing data. There were no ads on it or whatever. And then one day they saw there was money in this thing and all of a sudden they started putting up ads and they started stealing the data. And, um, you know, so we were the dumb ones, really, to think that this was all free. There was no price we were going to have to pay for this. Because they definitely, they, they definitely yeah, they, 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 I don't know how much they money they make off us, but it must be a fortune. Well, they don't make any money off of you because you're so disconnected, it's ridiculous. Yeah, maybe I'm, maybe they have a pile of people that they just uh, write off. Which you should be really happy about, actually. Yeah, I am, I'm yeah. you with you. you your, your, your life is, uh, uh, been, uh, is, is okay, you know? Your, your life, uh, you're living in, in your... You're virtually off the grid. <laughs> you're virtually off of the grid. There's no way anybody can steal your identity. I, I think it was you, though, that had the joke about, but let him try anyway. I have no life at all. Was that yours? Yeah. Someone stole my identity. Now his life sucks. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I think you used that on Letterman, didn't you? Used it on Letterman, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When are you going to do Letterman again? <laughs> Well, if we can get Dave to shave his beard and sign a new contract. <laughs> I don't think he's ever shaving that beard. It's uh, it's kind of disturbing, isn't it? <laughs> I, I hear that he's doing it because it pisses people off. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that would make sense. Yeah. Um, you know, not a bad... Uh, uh, I mean, it, I, I'm getting used to it. You know, it's now the new Letterman personality. Uh, so I mean, I I think he knew what he was doing. I mean, he would. Some people will grow a beard, and that just makes him look a little more distinguished. He he wanted to grow a beard and look like a Muslim, you know, yeah. he, not just a Muslim, a Muslim terrorist. <laughs> okay, and then he, he knew he'd piss everybody off, and I'm sure the wife and kid don't like it either, you know. So. Uh, what? And again, another talk about, I, I'm sure he was pushed out of CBS because of his age. Uh, I think that had a lot to do with it. I think it was because they felt that at his age he wasn't, he wasn't getting a younger demographic. But I don't know that Colbert is capable of any more. No. You know, his show is certainly an old show. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's just that nitwit uh, Jimmy Fallon with his fucking little games he plays with people. And he's getting too old. You know, I mean, yeah. uh, when Letterman started that night show, when he started at NBC, I think he was in his early 30s. You know, and Kimmel is in his 15th year now and just turned 50, 51. So Kimmel was like 35, 36 when he started his show. Um, however, um, uh, what's his name? Fallon uh, is, uh, God, I think he's 50. And he just started the show a couple of years ago. So I don't know how long any of these guys are going to last because they're going to get pushed out because of age. Hell, they pushed, Yeah, those, uh, those shows don't have a big uh, audience for sure. They pushed Johnny out. Yeah. You know, uh, that Helen Kushner uh, came along and, you know, it did it orchestrated this whole push out of, of, uh, of, of uh, Johnny Carson. I mean, do you ever think the day would come when Johnny Carson would be asked to leave? <laughs> I wasn't. So he, he actually was pushed out. I wasn't aware of that. I know. Yeah. 
Yeah. And she masterminded that? Yeah, she masterminded it. What she and did, she, she was, got a contract. She con- was Leno's. Uh, well, she got a contract for Leno that said that they had to give Leno the Tonight Show within two years. They owed him something like, I know, $5 million. Uh huh. So th- when that came up, they didn't want to pay him the $5 million, so they got rid of Johnny. You know, they said, Johnny, time to leave. Time to go. The ratings were fine. Nobody was beating him in the ratings. You know, it wasn't like like all of a sudden the bottom had fallen out of that show. So they got rid of him at the top, and then Leno came along, and the ratings went into the dumper for a while. Yeah. Until then, you, Grant, got a blowjob in a car. And, and Then he beat Letterman with that. Yeah, exactly. Hey, I just looked at the clock. Guess what? It flies. It flies when I'm always having fun with my decent pal, Larry Bubbles. My old pal, Alex Bennett. Yeah, Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Alex. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gavin, the Great American Broadcast Network. And that's our good friend, Larry Bubbles Brown. I hope you enjoyed him. I always enjoy Larry. And uh, uh, we'll have him on again in a couple of weeks, or probably next week, actually, to be honest with you. Anyway, hello everybody. How are you? God, I'm uh, I'm tired tonight. I'm always tired. I I think I uh, what I'm really worried about is this weekend when I got to do that damn show, and that I'm just going to be real tired. But I I push through. I push through somehow. The reason I'm tired last night I couldn't go to sleep. I I think I because I had a cup of coffee, and I couldn't go to sleep. And I then went and took a, 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 a little bit of a Xanax to try and chill me out. And uh, it, I guess, chilled me out too much because I woke up this morning. I've been groggy all day. So I've been groggy all the day. Do da, do da. Anyway, uh, I've opened up the Skype lines. This means that our people can call. Oh, here comes the first one. Scott Boddicker, ladies and gentlemen, we wondered where where Scott was last night and uh, the last couple of nights, and we suddenly figured out he was out murdering a girl in Iowa. <laughs> I heard that, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fuck Phil. Yeah. Anyway, uh, no, I, I I didn't want to call in when uh, 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 Albert was on since I talked to him the first night. I thought I'd let other people get in. And yeah. And, and, yeah. And, uh, well, I, I just... That's I've just been sitting back watching the American Patriot ramrod on your chat chat thing there. Yeah, who I say he's a Russian. I I think you're I think you're right, and I think that's that's good for you, man. You're getting the the uh, getting the Russians interested in your yeah. What you're I, doing uh, you damn right, damn right. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a positive, man. It is definitely a positive. <laughs> uh, so how have you how have you been, Mister Bodiker? What have you been doing? Well, my dog had some surgery done, so he's like a little baby around here, and he's been keeping me awake all night. So I've been tired the other two. That's why I didn't want to call in. What uh, What was wrong with the dog? Uh, he, he had a like a growth on his leg and had to get it uh, uh, ex- excised, I guess. I don't know, or taken yeah. off, or whatever. Right. Removed, right. basically. But but uh, oh, I was going to tell you. I looked it up. Jimmy Fallon, forty three. Jimmy Fallon, how old? What? J- Jimmy Fallon is forty-three. No, I, I, I think he's fifty. No, I just looked it up on uh, on uh, on on the thing on the Google. Really? Did you look it yeah. up on on, uh, on you looked it up on what do you call it on uh, Wikipedia? Yeah, unless somebody's changed his age. He's forty-three. <laughs> I thought no, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't I'm, sound I'm, right. Make sure I'm right. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I wish I had Echo here, but let me see. How old Jimmy Fowl, uh, Jimmy, uh, oh, uh, Jimmy uh, uh, Kimmel? How old? Oh, Jimmy Kimmel. I thought you said Jimmy Fallon. Well, Fallon, I think, is is older than that, too. But wait a minute. Jimmy James Kimmel. Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel's 50 years old. Okay. okay. Kimmel could be. I don't know. Okay. Now, all I have to do is ask the same question. Just change the last name to Fallon or Corden. Or, you know, or Fallon. Uh, it's F A L L O N. Here we go. There we go. Forty-three years old. You're absolutely correct. 
It was born. At, she's born about when I graduated high school. I can't believe he's that young. It really? Boy. But he's forty-three years old. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, but he's—I think he's terrible. So I don't. Oh, I, I, I can't. I don't. I don't like him either. I can't stand it. Uh, oh, hello, uh, Phil. Did you get hey. a new camera, Phil? No. Oh, I thought you went out and tried to get my camera. No, I, I have the whatever I had. Uh, it's could be. It says looking good because you're wearing that blue. Sure. What does it say? It kind of jumps, doesn't it? It jumps on at you. Uh, yeah, America. it's uh, Captain America. Right. Actually, um, uh, Tony sent it to me a while ago. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, you had made some disparaging remark about me always wearing black, so I uh, decided to put something else Yeah, on. well, it does what it's supposed to do. It makes you look fatter. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Howdy. Howdy, hey. Ray. Dr. Ray. Hey. How's it going? We yeah. always we Ray always exercises during this program. <laughs> no, nah, he, he's yeah, running from the cops. Almost home. So anyway, my week long uh, uh, people uh, guests are gone. Yeah. And the whole house seems terribly quiet. You All know, right. um, since my wife and I never talk to each other, it's just really quiet. You know, but. Uh, we, we, Had we, you we thought missed. about registering as an Airbnb? No, <laughs> you know. But uh, I, uh, we t we'd love to have them come back again. They're really good guests, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, it, and I, I mentioned to to Albert last night what was interesting about it, is I said, you know, when we work together, we never socialized, and you find that happens. Uh, no matter how much you work with somebody, you don't socialize with them because. I, I, w I was with him four hours a day. I was with him more than any wife would be practically, right? Yeah. And he with me. So you don't socialize. It's not, it's not part of your relationship. So I said, this whole week, we've socialized more in one week than we did in the whole four years. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we had him over to dinner once, but that's only a couple hours. You know, this was seven days. And, well, uh, and we got a lot of yeah. talk. You had a professional relationship, and yeah. uh, you try not to let the professional lines cross over. Well, to no, the you can be friends. You can be well, friends, but but you don't. You just don't socialize because you are with each other all the time. You know, yeah. when you when when you're off, you want to be off. And if you know, so I said to him, I said we actually have spent more time and gotten closer during this week than we ever did when we were working together, and it's true. You almost married the guy. Yeah, we almost got married. I, we didn't even go into that story last night. Yeah. Yeah, we won the raffle to get married. And uh, uh, when they first had marriage here in New York City, and uh, we were going to get married, but we talked about it to, to Sirius and said, look, if we do this, we want you to pay for the annulment. And they didn't want to. You couldn't go to legal Zoom and get an annulment for thirty nine ninety five. Well, yeah, no. I mean, but we were, we, t we were going to go get married. We were going to do the whole thing, you know, because yeah. our argument. And when we show up and people ask us, well, you know, how long have you been gay, or whatever, we go, no, we're not gay. Well, well yeah, what, there's no stipulation that you no have to. There's no stipulation that you gay. have to be gay. Right. You just have to have same sex to qualify for same sex marriage. Right. And, and what we're going to say is there's so many advantages to being married that we thought we'd take advantage of them. You know, why should just gay people have their, the ability to, you know, take it off on their taxes and crap like that? So, whatever, you know. Don't. And, and but have I, to deal with a significant other. Yeah, but I, I, you know, I really uh, enjoyed having him here. And uh, you know, his wife's very nice and... Her, her daughter was here most of the time too, just hanging out, and uh, it was just—it was really nice. It was, it, it was nice to kind of have other people in the house for a week, yeah. you know, that we liked having here. Uh, we've had some people that have been like guests here, who haven't been people we wanted to have here. There's this is one guy who, just absolutely, he thought he was living in a hotel, you know, and the maid yeah. would clean up behind him. I mean, literally clean up behind him. And he, so he's, we're never letting him stay here again. Uh, yeah. My friend Walter Sabo stays here occasionally, but he's got a lot of business when he's in town, so we hardly see him. He just, you know, he just 
comes home, uses the room, and gets out of here. So, so how much you charge for the cleaning deposit? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, but next time I told them I I told them I was going to put mints on the pillow, but it was so hot they would melt. So I didn't do that. Yeah. But it's it's wonderful. The last couple of days have been just wonderful weather here in New York. Yeah. And right, right. Uh, I, I just heard Jeff go. Yes, right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And he doesn't even live in New York. You know, let me get my face, my picture out of your face there. Uh, Here, uh, it's the skies are so overcast with smoke from the fires mm -hmm. all over California. Yeah. Uh, there's a smell of smoke in the air, and when I looked out, uh, just uh, to the uh, west, it was uh, completely impacted. Are the fires out yet? I don't think so. Really? Uh, I think there are several that are still burning. Uh, Ray, do you know anything about that? I can just tell you, I'm out here right now, and you see all this? It's not fog. It's smoke. Yeah. That's smoke. And the sun, I took pictures of the sun. It was amazing with the smoke in front of it. Yeah. That's all smoke in the air. Wow. Way up high. But now my question... Oh, and Alex, I'm going to be out there in October, so my family and I will be in your place... For uh, five days. <laughs> <laughs> but we're really, we're really neat. Are you bringing the dog? What do you do? What do you do with the dog when you uh, travel? My my, right? uh, my son who never comes, my son who never comes anywhere with us will take care of her. Ah. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, that's nice. 20 Yeah. You're breaking up a little bit. I oh, sorry. I'll turn off my thing. No, you don't have to turn it off. I mean, yeah. But, uh... Oh, yeah. he muted. Well, well, I'm know, near the freeway, so I don't yeah, want no. noise, too. When people come and stay, however, the thing that bothers me is that that room is kind of my man cave, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 yeah. And, and so I really have to... I, you know, in his case, I, I was... Uh, you know, it went by really fast, but for five... For seven days... When the show was over, I had to wander the apartment. You know, I couldn't, like, go into that room, watch some TV, uh, you know, uh, play with the computer in there, whatever, you know. So uh, things changed uh, but it, in my life that way. I had to go sit in the living room to watch TV. <laughs> or I could sit here in the office and watch it, too. So, and then I don't six go to, TVs. And I, I don't go to sleep till... You know, two o'clock in the morning. But I'll tell you one thing about Albert. He sleeps late. I mean, he went to bed like one night at about one o'clock in the morning and didn't get up till like 10 or 11 the next morning. He just well, that's loves. The time change between Florida and New York, you know? Oh, uh... yeah. 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 <laughs> really throws you off that jet lag is just <laughs> amazing. No, it's actually what you get between LA and here is a culture lag. Yeah. yeah, you know. So, uh, uh, it, but it it, it uh, you know it's a pretty uh, 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 it, was, it was a nice week. You know, I enjoyed it. They're welcome here anytime. But uh, anyway, you're right about the cultural lag between the uh, east and the west. It used to be about a five year uh, difference. You know, if you had things. Well, well I had a joke out. where I used to say when it's uh, when it's. Uh, uh, there's a time change uh, when it's like four o'clock in New York City. It's 1957 in San Francisco. <laughs> it's true. <Yeah. laughs> now I hear. I'll tell you. I was watching uh, Glenn Beck today. I, I, Great I, American. I, yes. I, I don't know. I don't like his politics, but I watch him because as one professional to another, he's very good at what he does. You know. Do you pay extra for his network? No. Uh, no, no, it's just on our cable I thought his, I thought his network was a pay-to-play. No, but it's also on cable. Oh. Uh. Okay. So anyway, and he runs commercials on it. Why should you pay for that? Right? Uh, I, maybe that was originally the way it was set up. Could have been. You, you had, Could have been. Yeah. But anyway, I was watching subscribe. him, and he started going to this whole rant about the feces in San Francisco. Now, we're not talking about dog feces. We're talking about human feces. Homeless feces. Uh, people are shitting in the streets. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and I wonder what happened to Bennett's law in that town. What's that? That was the law I got passed. Uh, um, Angela Aliotta went into the uh, uh, Board of Supervisors and passed a law that any public garage in, New- in San Francisco, and there are a lot of those that are owned by the city or public sure. garages, had to make their bathrooms available, or at least one bathroom available to the homeless. Yeah, it was like Stockton O'Farrell and all of those, yeah, yeah, uh, the yeah. Mission and Fifth, and, and, and there's no, city garages. And, and there's nothing wrong with doing that, you know? I think that'd be a great idea because, you know, as I say, I was in New York City and some bum wanted to use a toilet in the hotel and the guy kicked him out. And well, I thought to you, myself, now, that, seen, what do you want that guy to do, shit in the street? And that's what's happening in yeah. San Francisco. Had you seen those uh, Paris toilets where you, for a quarter, well, you have and, them and in, it washes they have, afterwards? They have, they have them they in, sh- wait a minute, they have them in San Francisco. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, but what they should do is hand out tokens uh, to these homeless people yeah. uh, so that they can use it uh, and then stay and position them in areas where they're housing up you know well they're they're down on the market street they're still there i believe you know yeah but they were they're on these, market uh, t- they're on division paris toilets yeah uh, oh yeah that they replaced the old toilets remember those circular things that look so nice with the posters on them and stuff like you know what those were yeah those were pieces uh, those, was, those were pissoirs you used to just go oh. in and pee in them okay yeah. and they, that was a bit unsanitary so they came up with this idea of these uh, a giant uh, these these things these toilets you go sort into of like them, a pod and yeah and you go into it and you take your dump or whatever and even if you peed all over the place you messed it up you rubbed feces on the wall the minute you walked out the door locked for about two minutes and the whole place like sprayed itself mm-hmm. right, and cleaned itself out and then the next person could use it uh, so they do have those in San Francisco or they used to now whether they're still there or not uh-huh. I don't know there used to be one in, uh, right on uh, Union Square mm-hmm. uh, in front of that uh, O'Farrell, uh, no, the Union Square garage, the mm-hmm. one across from Macy's. Yeah. And, I think uh, the problem is there's so many homeless down there that they would overwhelm them, and, and yeah. they found that I think some of them are sleeping in them and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, until they... And they're sh- shooting up and everything else in them. Well, the, the problem is, is he, according to Glenn Beck, it's the feces and the needles. Right, and yeah, they have the now they now have the a group, a, a new group, a force they put together. They're in hazmat poop, outfits. Poop patrol, and they're called the Poop Patrol. Yeah, <laughs> and they're cleaning up poop in San Francisco. Now I want to know how you're going to have a city where people are shitting in the streets and there are uh, hypodermic needles everywhere, and you're charging nine thousand dollars a month for a one bedroom apartment. Yeah, how do you well, do this, that? How do you justify why. that? The new mayor, uh, her name is London Breed, she's the one that's put together the poop patrol. And uh, Ray was in uh, San Francisco last night uh, over on Mission Street, Mission and maybe 3rd or 4th. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said that the city seemed a lot cleaner to him than it has in the last few months. So maybe this poop patrol is, is working oh, here, out. Here comes Ray. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Is that Ray? There's Ray. Okay. Yeah, I'm back. I just I heard you talking about the toilets, so I had to yeah. get back on. Yeah. So I think I think all the France the auto toilet, and uh, we had them here, but I think they got rid of most of them in the city because people were living in them. Yeah. Wow. That's what I thought. <laughs> So, uh, uh, yeah, so they're gone. So but you know what they have in France now? They have these like they're like they look like potted giant potted plants on the street, yeah. and they're for guys to walk up and take a leak, and 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 somehow the piss goes into the bottom, of it, and they're in Paris now. You are just walk are up they and take a piss? Are they private so that no kids can? No. Uh, no? You know, no, 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 nobody. They don't smell it, like it, it yeah. cleans itself like the yeah, other things. I out. think what Phil is questioning is the man pulling out his penis and taking a leak in public. Right. And That's you know the I French thought. somehow don't have the 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 no, they don't uh, worry about the that. uncomfortableness with seeing a human penis. Okay. No, they don't. You know. Yeah. And and good yeah. for them. You know. Uh, yeah. I, I, Italy is the same way. 
When, when yeah. I had the uh, prostate issues and I had to pee about every 18 minutes, yeah. uh, you know, sometimes I had to pull off the road and, uh, and take care of business. But uh, finally, I got one of those bottles that they use at the hospital. And you could pee in the bottle and stay in the car. And then when you went to get out of the car, all you had to do was dump the bottle so there was no exposure of... Uh, Boy, what an exciting life parts. you lead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Really exciting. Well, we could we could talk about the million Muslims that are in Chinese uh, gulags right now, you know, if you want. If you don't want to talk about the a million Muslims in one Chinese. million, yeah, really. Your buddy Tucker Carlson is the one. Oh, that, oh, uh, oh, 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 yeah. It must be true then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was also uh, passing the story last night about South Africa. It's true, the South African no, it, but story. No, uh, but he, he told it wrong. He didn't get the story straight. Uh, yeah. What they're uh, doing is they're claiming back a lot, of, uh, a lot of land which was stolen from blacks during apartheid. Yeah, but they're saying that just because these whites look like the ones that stole the land... There, uh, there's genocide going on. There, uh, this and supposedly, no supposedly, according to uh, uh, what what I've heard, that story mm -hmm. is a racist story being promulgated by the American Nazi Party. Yep. And you're buying it. Yeah, Tucker true. says it's true. Well, Tucker bought it too, <laughs> but it is it, it literally is a a what can we call it, a complete fabrication that was created by the American Nazi Party here in America. Well, you know, maybe they're the ones that are on your uh, live chat. Well, I'm and sure that that guy, <laughs> American Patriot, or whatever he calls himself. I, I didn't see him. Uh, the only one I see is, uh, not, well, not, uh, not tonight, but the uh, last no, couple oh, of nights. Oh, okay. You saw him, right, Scott? Oh, he's crazy. He's crazy. Now, you know, I didn't think he was so crazy. Uh, you know, the things you he was wouldn't. talking yeah, about well, uh, seemed to be pretty crazy. reasonable to me. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Crazy yeah, looks crazy. Yeah. yeah. There's a right, sign up, Phil. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for any eventuality. You know, <laughs> so <laughs> I go from the NRA to the. Uh, Make America great again. Yeah. Okay. Well, when was it great first? I, I just need to know I the answer come up, to that question. I've, I've come up with a new slogan: Make America yeah. good again. Well, uh, America Trump free. Yeah. Well, one way or another. Well, that would be uh, part of making I, it good again. I thought again. maybe you like that uh, the the governor of New York, uh, Cuomo, mm -hmm. uh, when he said America was never great. He's right. Well, was it? It wasn't. Oh, what? Uh, tell, really tell, tell me when it was great. Uh, it was great when uh, we got behind uh, defeating the Nazis. Uh, and, wait, wait, wait a minute. Hold uh, on a second. Hold on a second. Got the wait a minute. Wait a minute. We had to go kicking and screaming into World War II. It wasn't until Pearl Harbor happened that we, need, we had the excuse we needed. Meanwhile, the Nazis were going rampant in Europe all, all well, along. Well, that's because we had a lot of pro-Nazis here, like uh, Ford and... Uh, no, you know, no, 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 no. They were not causing <laughs> the problem of why we didn't go over there. We didn't go over there because the American public, after World War I, didn't want us to go into another war. And so Roosevelt felt he couldn't just go willy-nilly into another war. No. And then when Pearl Harbor happened, which some people said he allowed to happen because he knew it was going to happen, uh, he then had an excuse for us to arm. And as long as we were arming, let's go the other direction too. The, the same thing happened then that is happening now. Uh, these A lot of American industrialists we were making a lot of money uh, supplying things to the Germans, uh, whether it was building the railroads that took the uh, people to the concentration camps uh, and, and supplying a, a number of things. So as long as they stayed out of the war, they could continue to supply the Germans and make this money. Yeah. Well, the same thing is happening with the Chinese. Nobody is saying anything about the million uh, Muslims that are in uh, prisons, or uh, 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 there even have uh, there's other other people that are being uh, imprisoned in China, and the reason that no one's saying anything is that it's economically uh, viable for other countries to trade with China, 
And, uh, you know, I mean, if we draw a picture of, uh, of a uh, Muslim cleric and make it into a cartoon, they want to put a hit squad out on the guy. But if you uh, take a million of them and put them in gulags, then no big deal. Let's see here. Uh, China's, uh, here we go, Huffington Post. Uh, uh, yeah, a real, a real uh, good... Uh, Wait a minute. Uh, Hold on a second. Yeah. You haven't listened yet. Maybe all right, they, all right. they but agree Huffington with Post your comment. story. Uh, United <laughs> Nations human rights experts made global headlines in session that concluded Monday when they said they believe China is holding one million members of a Muslim minority group in a secret prison camp. It's a scale of tyranny that is hard to imagine, a sprawling system of detentions for political re-education and growing surveillance network outside the camps, ostensibly the only possible response uh, to the risk of terrorism. Uh, wow. uh, uh, but despite Chinese government's vast, often brutal attempts to control what the world knows about its repression, the UN announcement is also proof that US, Chinese citizens, journalists, and advocacy groups are succeeding in long-shot efforts to get out the truth. So you see, there was the Huffington Post. I was right. I was right. That's well. You're you know. right up to a point. You're wrong where no, you no, think you no, think no, that so, I'm going to so you're, you're going to think that I'm going to make an excuse for the Chinese doing this, and I'm not going to. But they also have imprisoned over the years millions of their own people for re-education. Well, okay. Yeah. Uh, where we've never talked about the Chinese, you, you really have to, it's funny, you have to separate the Chinese government from the Chinese business. It, it's but a, you're, miss, you're, missing, you're missing the point. Why aren't the Muslims up in arms over this? They're not saying well, anything maybe they because didn't. the Chinese are so heavily invested in their countries, and there's so much money being wait a minute, the Muslims are silent. Wait, what do you mean the Muslims are invested in China? Can you say no, that for a China fact? China is invested in Muslim countries, whether it be power plants, selling them arms. Well, then apparently, doing, apparently they're doing some good for Muslims too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they're housing a million of them. No, no, no. <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. And, and re-educating. Wait a minute. What you're saying is is that the reason the Muslims aren't reacting is because the Chinese are doing good by them. And no, in, that they're invested. It's all about well, money. Well, it, well, it, they're investing in them. You know, I find the uh, the holding of Muslims or anybody else. I mean, how many Muslims uh, were jailed and uh, in uh, in in Israel? Not not a million. Uh, tens of thousands. Yeah, there were there were concentration camps they, in they, Israel they were, in Israel they, for Muslims. They were Palestinian terrorists. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. These were just and average people. They rounded up because they didn't want. They wanted. To, they didn't want really to have Muslims in well, their country. Well, now this is a, a what aboutism. Thank you very much. Uh, the uh, um, you got a million Muslims. This is no no Muslim country has said squat. You know, I mean, you had uh, uh, Rushdie. Who, uh, who to begin with? Book, to begin with? Verses. To begin with? This information just came out from the UN on Monday. Maybe the rest of the Muslim world didn't know what was going on in China. They don't have Facebook. No, they don't. No. Oh, uh, these, not, in China Muslims? they don't, but uh, you know the well, Muslim countries do. Yeah. Are, they, are these Muslims Chinese? I don't know. I mean, they'd have to be, wouldn't they? I mean, uh, they're, they're uh, immigrants. Uh, and Alex said it was a sect. Of Muslims, it looks like it's a sect of Muslims. Yeah, so maybe like Indonesian. I know they have a lot of Muslims too, but Could I didn't be. know Chinese even. Oh, <coughs> excuse me, had any Muslims in China? Well, if maybe they do, there's they're Scientology living in the camps. So by bringing yeah. this up, what are you trying to prove? Uh, uh, we were on the get uh, ready some for this, subject. Folks. Yeah, uh, get ready for and, this. You know. I, I mean, I'm doing better with remembering stuff because I'm getting more blood to the <laughs> to the, to the brain. Yeah, I keep but, I keep praying, playing for praying for a clog again. Uh, <laughs> no, my uh, question to you is, what was it, by bringing that up, and of course sidetracking the discussion? What what what, what did you hope to prove? That I was going to say the Chinese were wonderful. No, the uh, Chinese government is very tyrannical. As a matter of fact, right. 
Uh, I had a reason for bringing it up, and now I can't remember what it was. Oh, you see, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There was you a, know, hey, it's, you thought uh, I was going to sit. Maybe here. it's the collusion thing. Maybe it's because yeah, it's, you want to. It's because you want to show that China is uh, collude, not collude. Yeah, is is colluding to ruin our election. No, I, I, I was trying to. Sh- <laughs> I was trying to show the hypocrisy of what's going on in, in the world today. And uh, how? Uh, well, you certainly certain made things... your point, Phil. Yeah. Well, yeah, I did. a lot of hypocrisy. I think China's it, it, the Chinese government is horrible for the most part. They do terrible things to their people. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> they do. Yeah. It's, and it's, hey, it's I gave you a decent subject to talk about too. No, you know? it's not a decent subject. We don't have any more information than than this uh, information that dribbled out of China. You know. Yeah. Huffington. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, I mean, if Huffington's going to say something negative about uh, anything except Trump, uh, it must be true. It, oh, okay. Here they are. They're called the Ulgers. They're an ethnic group targeted by China's ruling Communist Party. They have realized that it doesn't help to keep uh, be quiet. Uh, uh, Uyghur uh, willing to volunteer. Uh, okay, so these are called Ulgers. Ulgers. Uh, uh, I guess they are a group. Uh, China has been wary of the 10 million Muslims, predominantly Ulgur residents, of its northwestern Xinjiang province for decades. Okay. Mm. Uh, Beijing ramped up security checks and forced interrogation with the country's Han Chinese minority amid global fears following the 9 11 attacks. So, wow. this has been something that's been long standing. Long yeah, well, they, they look what they did to Tibet and uh, the yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Dalai Lama. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. that phony fuck. Yeah. Well, he speaks in a relaxing manner when he does speak. Yeah, yeah, but he's, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, I was talking about this, I think, with Albert, and we were, he was saying to me, he said, well, why do they make a big deal out of the, the Dalai Lama? It's not like he's exactly out there saving his people. You know, it's not like he's out, you know, he's just living in nice hotels and pontificating. He yeah, he's done, on the speaker circuit. He, yeah, he hadn't done shit. But one day he helped me with my golf game in Augusta. <laughs> I was on the 18th hole, and there he was, the Dalai Lama himself, the flowing robes, the grace. And I said, hey, Lama, how about a little something for the effort? And he said, on your deathbed, you will regain complete consciousness. Yeah. So I got that going for me. Yeah. Sorry. Hmm. Hey, uh, talking about <laughs> Bill Murray, uh, he beat up a 71-year-old photographer last week. Oh, good for him. And well, the, considering the photographer claims he wasn't even taking Murray's picture. Well, you see, you say that like that it's a horrible Murray. thing, but probably Murray is 75. So, you know, it's no big deal that he hit a guy 71. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, the photographer claimed that he wasn't even photographing Murray and didn't realize that Murray was there. And uh, it was, uh, I guess, in a restaurant that Murray uh, uh, frequents. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he got his ass kicked. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. That's but, but you, say, uh, you had to put in 71-year-old. Like, it matters. I mean, if he were... 13 it would be just as terrible or if he was 25 it would be just as terrible but no, just the he, facts he was man. 31 just the facts you know yeah just the facts you don't know the 71 year old didn't know taekwondo you know i mean no he he didn't he he yeah uh, he got beat up and and probably rightfully so he was probably using a cannon yeah i, I would love to read <laughs> i would love to read the newspapers you're reading because i keep wondering where you get all this information from when yeah. you're getting your your information from Tucker Carlson, you're going to the lowest possible source. Don't you love the guy? I, it was good to me. All right. But that's on a personal basis. His politics are completely out to lunch. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Look, I have an auto toilet on my street. <clears throat> well, that's not really an auto toilet, but you can use it as one, I suppose. <laughs> if there's a plant growing next to it, it's the same thing as Paris. Exactly. I couldn't believe that. Well, I can. They're French, but... God, I'm glad I don't have a dog. Then I wouldn't have to do all these walks like you do. Uh, Well, if I didn't do it, nobody else in my house would, so... And I don't want her to... I don't want her to get some exercise. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm going out to check out a gym tomorrow at 5.30. 
Are you really? So, A.M.? Yeah. Why? why? Uh, no, you, in the you, evening. You decide you're going to oh. start working out? Uh, well, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a week or so since the operation and they said that I could start, uh, light workouts and they recommended that I lift weights and, and do some cardio. Yeah. So, well, I, uh, I, I didn't do my workout today and I feel bad about it cause I won't be able to do it again until Monday. So, yeah. you know, by you know, the for way, 15 bucks a month, you can buy one of those bikes and put it in the, uh, yeah, but I don't want it. I don't want it in the house. Yes, uh. Jeff. Yeah, I was wondering from Phil, don't they have a, a, a post surgical physical therapy? This program? is Kaiser. <laughs> Kaiser's uh, post uh, therapy is, uh, hey, you're good to go. <laughs> yeah, get out of here. Pay the bill and get out of here. Yeah. What they did was uh, during, after the first stent, uh, Jeff, what they had me do is attend a two day class. They talked about exercise, the type of exercise, yeah. diet things like that, but you're pretty much on your own afterwards. The only thing that they're going to do post that class is uh, tweak my uh, Lipitor. So I'm currently on 40 milligrams, I think, of Lipitor, which is the lowest uh, dosage, and uh, so they, they may raise the dosage. They're going to put it on stun. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I, it, uh, what was I going to say? Eh, I forgot. Uh, we were talking about gym. You didn't say you exercised. Oh, and, I didn't exercise. Uh, so, and I kind of feel felt bad about it, even though I went three days in a row, you know. But then again, I said to myself, if I do this too much, I'm just really going to get tired of it. You know, I, I want to do just enough that I don't get tired of it. And tomorrow, you change it up? tomorrow I'm going for physical therapy, so I kind of consider that uh, exercise of sorts, you know. So... Um, but I won't be able to do it until Monday again. So, because yeah. I don't like to do it over the weekend. Too many other things I have to do. You know? Yeah, like go like to sleep. Like go to Costco. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Important stuff. Huh? That's exercise. Important stuff. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so uh, let me see here. Uh, in the, in, is there anything happening in the news? Uh, I was trying to give you some, but you uh, you poo hooed it. Yeah, poo poo hooed it. What is yeah, poo hooed poo -hoo or whatever? Is uh, that a combination of like poo pooing and boo hooing? Poo hooing. Poo -hoo yeah. Poo -hoo poo hooing. Yeah. Poo -hoo. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Jeff. I heard a little bit tonight that in New York, that because Trump has its own business. And as far as I know, he's the only owner of the company. Mm -hmm. And uh, New York has different uh, laws or attitudes about figuring out about the financial issues mm -hmm. because they think that he was cheating on the taxes for New York. Ooh. No, no, it can't be true. Tell That's me why he didn't want to give up his uh, he didn't want to give up his tax return. But I have a feeling that uh, that tax return is going to be uh, eventually be put into evidence. Uh, if uh, uh, now uh, there was the guy who uh, is the CEO of the Inquirer, uh, yeah. Peck Puck, Pecker, or, yeah, Pecker, 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 Pecker. Pecker. Is his name? And, uh, is his name yeah. Pecker? Yeah, Pecker. Yeah. So there, there's, uh, there's going to be some things arising out of that and possible hey, payoffs. And uh, so, yeah, they're gonna, he may end up having to provide his tax return as part of uh, the Wait, evidence oh. yes, discovery. Jeff. Yes, Jeff. Apparently, Cone got, I think I heard, $400,000 from Trump for this money to pay for those two ladies yeah and the way the money was distributed part of it was law for legal fees mm -hmm. well guess what he didn't do any legal fees well there there's a uh, providing uh, making the transfer of money is a legal fee you know is a legal 
it's a it's something he did and would get remunerated. That's why he's an attorney. That's what they do. Oh, by the way, I just saw Renee on the uh, chat, and I just wanted to say to Renee, I uh, hope everything's fine because the hurricane is hitting the big <laughs> yeah, island. Yeah, I was just going to say that. She it's left hit, a little weather. Hitting weather Hilo. Up. She says that she hasn't been affected by it, but uh, still, you know, just want to wish you the best. You know, They're going to get two feet of water there. And that, that's more than they get in half a well, year. Well, what she says here is aloha all. Before I go to catch the weather, Big Island had flooding and windy, but nothing major. Hilo has flooding. I hope the gym is okay. That's uh, James. Uh, James Lee. Yeah. James Lee. Uh, worried about Oahu tonight. I, from what I saw, Oahu wasn't going to be hit. But it was I thought her hit. island was the one that was going to be hit. Obviously, her island has been hit. Not yeah. directly, but the tails yeah. of it and mm -hmm. so on. It's kind Is of it scary. a good? Yeah, what? I think it's like supposed to be the worst will be the first day. Yeah. yeah. Which has just started. Is well, it geez, still a Category Renee, 4? Renee, we'd love to have you call us uh, on Skype and stick the camera out your yeah. window so we when, can see this weather, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, because you don't live close enough to the volcano for us to see that, thank you very much. <laughs> but, That's right. That's paradise, baby. That's it's a cat. It's a cat three film. It's right now. Oh, now it is. Okay. Well, it's at least it's it's calming down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people stuck in, on the islands. Kim Kardashian is stuck in Maui. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but the grass will hold her down. I was going to say that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, she lost weight. She's now 116 pounds. Yeah, and, but forty uh, pounds of slimmer. that is forty pounds of that is her ass. Hundred pounds is her ass. Yeah, do you think she has ass implants? Uh, there are rumors he do she does actually. Yeah, I knew a guy that uh, was really into plastic surgery, and he even had a chin implant uh, to to give him a. What does that have to do with her ass? Well, it's just the plastic surgery well, yes, but as, people uh, have, there as a are sport. Some, there are such, such things as implants for your cheeks, for your ass, yeah, for your brain, Phil. Oh, yeah, a brain implant. You, you, uh, yes, that, that's what they do yes, to Scott, Democrats. Yes, Scott, what? <laughs> what were you going to say, Scott? I was going to say something about a penal implant, but I, I, it wouldn't be appropriate. No, that would not be appropriate. It, it might be. <laughs> By the way, I have to work clean for the next couple of nights because I, <laughs> I got to get used to it. I, I, I'm worried. Uh, I, I, usually, it never happens. I've never I gone from doing uh, the internet and then gone do it, done radio and had any problem that way. But <laughs> I'm, I am a little worried because it has been five years that I've been saying fuck and cunt and everything else on this show. <laughs> But somehow when I walk into a radio studio, that changes. I just, it's like, you know. But yeah. I'll warn them to keep an eye out for anything I might say that might be inappropriate. You know, but, uh, well, it's, it's, you said it was a lighter show and you're not going to get very political. And, I'm not going uh, to get into politics. I might get into social issues, but, you know, yeah. not, uh, not politics. Yes, uh, Jeff. What time is it going to be on? It's going to be on uh, here on the East Coast. Yeah. It'll be from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock at night. <laughs> so. On Sunday. Uh, yeah. Show West you, Coast. Show you how radio works. The first, the first hour, uh, I, I, I have different breaks and so on. And during the first hour, uh, there's, a break at tw there's a break at 20 to 25, and then I'm on from 25 to 30 in each hour, right? Uh, a little five-minute segment there. Well, in that first hour, uh, there's a guy who comes in and does the national weather for five minutes. So actually, I'm not going to be on for 15 minutes of that show in the first hour. So when I'm through, it'll probably be like doing, oh, I don't know, a half hour show. I mean, it's just, you know, with all the commercials and all the breaks and stuff like that. Well, but the uh, best time for you, early enough to find out us. where the bathroom well, is. The best time for you guys, if you want to call to call would be in the last uh, hour, I would imagine. Uh, but if you hear me begging for callers, you can call at any yeah. time during it. Uh, um, 
but um, you know, I, it, Phil. I mean, like if you call, I, I don't want to talk about politics particularly. No, you know, I. Uh, it, it you can, have some topics so that no, uh, I don't. I, can do brush I, up. I do. I ever do topics. Do you well, ever hear it, me do topics? Well, you know, I'm thinking that maybe you I want. I never uh, structured a show with topics. Yeah. Yeah. That's not the way right. I work. Right. However, well, the well, first hour is going to be about about getting old. Right. Uh, but uh, after that, the next hour is open for anything. And then I got Durst on during the last the 15 minutes in the second half of the show. And then uh, uh, then the last hour, I have nothing scheduled, you know. So I, I'm just going to take calls. I'll talk about stuff. I'll, you know. Yeah. Sports? Uh, sports, absolutely. Going to get into sports big time. <laughs> you, you know. Um, <laughs> Almost next. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not looking forward to it at all. You know. You'll do fine. And pl plus, yeah, you'll do better than well, Shakespeare well, here, up, in the, here is, up, here, up on the here, screen. Here is the thing. There is a thing we call, I think I, maybe I talked about it last night, the, uh, the disc jockey's nightmare. Mm -hmm. The disc jockey's nightmare is a recurring nightmare, and every time I've talked to other radio people, they've all had the same identical dream at one point or another. And that is, uh, you, you're out, you have to go to the bathroom, you go to the bathroom, and you come back, and the studio's locked. Or you, <laughs> or, or you try to get back to the studio, but you can't find it. Okay? That's, that's very interesting. Uh, you know, those well, kinds of fears, I've, I've had can a reoccurring you let me finish? dream. Can you let me finish what I'm saying? Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> so I'm talking, I, I'm talking to Walter Sterling Sabo, whatever his name is. Uh, uh -huh. uh, and, and he said, by the way, remember those dreams you used to have about, uh, you know, not being able to get, just make sure you know how to get back from the bathroom to the studio. He said, because one night it, I couldn't find the studio. Oh, shit. Uh, no. And so I'm worried about that because I know I can't go three hours without peeing or just feeling like I can go three hours without peeing, but I would rather not go three hours without peeing. Okay. So I'm going to have to figure out how to get to that bathroom and get back. So what I'm going to do is have the guy who's there because he's not going to be there while I'm doing the show. He just goes somewhere else. I just got a microphone and guys in Philadelphia doing all the work. Uh, but I'm going to ask him to be available on the hour to help me or just to come back with me and show me how to get back to the studio you yeah. know because if i come back and they're like five studios that all look exactly alike yeah well that, yours has a uh a, a label on the door it says janitor's closet yeah it says yeah, yeah it says laundry room <laughs> right yeah so it wasn't one of the one of the old uh nightmares of the the old djs was you, you put on a long record and like in a Gata de Vida or something, then go down and take a dump, and it starts skipping about halfway through well, it. No, there's an old story about that. Yeah. Uh, about a guy, uh, a guy who uh, li it was seventeen li minutes was cheating on his wife, <laughs> and he decided this was a middle of the night show, so he could do it. He put on, I think it was like Arlo Guthrie's Alice's Restaurant, which is like twenty eight oh, yeah. minutes. Twenty eight minutes, and uh, he uh, then went out. To a hotel that was just a motel that was just right next door, to have sex with his girlfriend, and not his uh, the woman who was not his wife, and <laughs> oh my! Yeah. And all of a sudden the record gets stuck and starts skipping and playing over and over again, and he doesn't know that that's what's happening. But that's that that's a that's a story I heard years ago. Well, I've I've heard that happen before, and sometimes you you know I think it was on K San at one point, and I heard the record skip, and you're going, okay, somebody's there, I know it, and and it would not, you know, it would keep continue skipping. Yeah, that know? was the one. That, you're wondering who's there. There were certain records you put on when you had to take a pee really badly, yeah, yeah. or you had to whatever, yeah. Uh, and uh, I remember in the old days, I guess when we were playing 45s and it was single radio, 
El Paso was about four minutes and 50 seconds or something. Now, was this before they had the carts? Must be, uh, must no. be, must be uh, uh, our, uh, our good friend Tony here and his neighbors with their cars. The going race race. I can't wait oh. to move, actually. Is that a NASCAR right. track? Yeah. Is that a NASCAR right track, next. Tony? You was was it? Hey, is that a NASCAR track? The next, do you, hey, do you know? Pretty much, 69th nice. Street is like nice they speed down here like crazy yeah. going to Queen Fulva. Hey, you got my Captain America shirt on. Yeah, <laughs> he's a true American today. Yeah, genius. Yeah, uh, but, you know, Alex, you you were talking about a reoccurring dream, yeah. and uh, I I've had one that uh, reoccurred, a uh, two actually that have been one that re has been reoccurring since I was a kid. And it was uh, uh, that one, I could just go like this with my arms and I could fly. And uh, the other one was a cop one where I was in a gun battle and my gun wouldn't fire. No matter how hard I pulled on the trigger, uh, it wouldn't fire. And I think uh, I didn't get shot, but I, it was... That's the, your nightmare. That's our dream. Yeah. <laughs> Which one of those theories do you want to try right now? You want to go to the window or you want like to this. try your gun? <laughs> go to your roof and try to fly. No, well, don't don't uh, have any of you had a you know like a that flying reoccurring dream? Oh, fly, or, oh yeah. flying I mean, dreams. I think that one's common. Flying dreams are very common. Yeah. You can't yeah. talk. Really? Yeah, I wonder what that means. Then. Yeah, I, I, I have believe it or not, I have a lot of reoccurring dreams in which serious occurs. What do you mean? Like, like I'm there, or I'm in the building, or something, you know, and then mm -hmm. they've changed the whole layout, and I can't <clears> find my way around. I, you know, just strange shit like that, you know. Yeah. Uh, I used to have them a lot when when I was first fired. I, I used to. It was that first year was very rough on me. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, you know, anyway. So, so anyway, we got. Um, we have um, uh, 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 Sessions, the Attorney General, uh, coming out today and essentially <laughs> telling uh, Trump, Trump to go fuck himself. <laughs> Basically, what he was saying. Well, he was he defended himself. He said uh, that he, you know, uh, because of him, there's a lot of judges that uh, were pushed through uh, uh, their, you know, the the. Uh, thing to get approved and uh he says he's had a lot to do with that and, and he has uh but i i can understand uh you know trump being a little pissed off that the guy recused himself well, just well, because he had a 20 it? minute meeting with well, some russian well, guy no, but that's that, <laughs> some russian guy. that is every reason to recuse himself and i thought that was a very honest thing for him to do uh, but you yep. don't consider that traitorous you know, no, right? you don't consider that a, 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 a failure of trust. You know, that's only an egotist would come up with that attitude that, you know, you betrayed me, you rat. You know, yeah, you dirty rat. Rat <laughs> thing. Yeah. 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 But, uh, but, 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 but in uh, in uh, on that uh, Fox interview, he went yeah. after Sessions saying, you know, Sessions, blah, 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 blah. And so as so Sessions today really just said hey you know when i he said he's never done his job was what he what he basically right. said and sessions said i started doing my job the day i got here and and i'm working with some of the finest people around you know and that's defending the honor of of the justice department um uh, and you know that breaking of sessions with trump there are a lot of people starting to abandon him now People who were doggedly on his side and doggedly with him. I mean, what's his name? Cohn said he'd take a bullet for him. 80 percent, or they said eighty or ninety percent of Republican voters are behind Trump. So, uh, and and they uh, they were saying that in uh, when Nixon was going through, uh, you know, what he went through, yeah. his ratings were very low with Republican voters. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. you know, Trump okay. seems to still have uh, a yeah, lot of back. Yeah, yeah, well, he, it's going gonna, gonna to wane, believe me. Speaking but, but there's 50% Republican voters now than there were when he took office. Okay, but let me, go to, let me go to James Lee in Hawaii because I don't know how long he can stay with us. Hello, James. Oh, how you doing, Mr. Bennett? Yeah, we're surviving. Yeah, how bad is it out there? 
Uh, heavy rain, heavy rain. Uh, all schools are closed. No post office delivery. All the banks are closed. Hawaiian Air shut down the airport. Uh, no flights into Honolulu. Uh, all the dialysis units are, have closed, so there's no real dialysis going on in the Big Island. Uh, Hilo Medical Center is strictly for emergencies. Uh, the rain is coming down. We've had in the past 12 hours about 10 inches of rain. Uh, I don't have flooding at my place, uh, but uh, I can't get into town because four miles of the road's kind of washed out. Uh, wow. <laughs> so, you know, we got 14 days of food and, you know, a lot of lima beans and cans with a manual can opener. I'm stepping outside here. You can hear the rain coming down probably in the yeah. background. Wait a minute. There, there we go. Can you, can... I'm stepping out in the, in the background. Let me see if I can flip this around. Hang yeah. on a second. Okay. Let's How see. are the dogs doing, you know? when uh, I, can't, uh... I can't flip it around. Wait a second. Let me just turn. You look behind me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Wow. Yeah. I don't know if you still copy. It's overcast. Yeah, yeah we see you. Oh yeah, it's the overcast. The rain is coming down. You copy? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 And four. Copy. Wow. Bears look at what this pouring out of the gutter and uh, yeah, downspout. And you wanted to move to Hawaii, Phil. They get a lot of storms. Yeah. But it's beautiful. Well, yeah. No, er, well, ever since Renee moved there, they've had volcanoes go off and hurricanes. Oh, yeah. Maybe, oh. maybe she's the goddess of, uh, maybe she's Pele for all we know. Oh, yeah. Not a lot of wind though. That's that the rain coming down out there. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't look like a lot of wind though, really. Yeah, all well, the green, everything grows fast. You know, weeds are gonna gonna grow in three inches in overnight, literally out here. And with this mm. kind of rain oh, coming awesome. down, I don't know if you can hear it in the background. It's coming down. Well, every day of your life there, you're fighting the jungle, right? It's really? everything wants yeah. to grow back. Don't they expect 24 inches of rain? Uh, anyway, you can't, oh my you can't find God. a can of fruit cocktail in the stores here. Yeah. <laughs> now, will all this rain put out the volcano? <laughs> uh, no, sorry. Well, you know, uh, Pally keeps going on her own. You know, yeah. and that's another problem of a gentleman we, because we have about a thousand families homeless. They've been living in tents in the park. Well, with the storm coming in, they all got to go into the high school gymnasiums or the Red Cross shelters. So, you know, it, it's pretty packed up around this joint. Wow. Wow. Uh, you know, the restaurants are all closed. Uh, Safeway is, you know, they shut down. Uh, you can't get a roll of toilet paper. Uh, no more bottled water. Uh, the last Young Brothers barges, you know, uh, between islands, the last sailing was yesterday. Mm -hmm. So no uh, dockings for the next week. Wow. All the big ships in Pearl Harbor, the battle group, the Navy battle group had to go to sea. The carriers have all left. Can you get uh, water from the rain? Uh, you know, no, can you see, collect I have, it? I have catchment right behind me. Yeah. And you see my downsprouts. That's going into a 10,000-gallon tank. Wow. Okay. But the issue is if I lose power, then I can't flush the toilets because my pumps won't work. Oh, no. Oh. You have a generator? A generator. Oh, yeah. Wow. Hey, that's paradise, gentlemen. <laughs> where are so, where are you in Hawaii? Say again. Where, where what part of Hawaii are you? I'm on living the Big in? Island of Hawaii. I'm 200 air miles yeah. uh, southeast of Honolulu. No, I know. I've been on. Hawaii I've been to the Big Islands. I know. I've been to the Big Island. Honolulu is, is on the island of Oahu. You remember that, Mr. Bennett? You were there. Yeah. yeah. I've been mm -hmm. to the Big Island a lot. I just was wondering where you know, the on big the Big Island, of course, is the island of Hawaii. And, uh, Mr. Meyer, you want to go to the island of Maui. Maui's right. getting whacked right now. Yeah, Ray, I think he's in, near Hilo. Yeah. In fact, uh, Maui, okay. you know, uh, two of the main roads are shut down, and they got real problems because you've got people isolated there. Yes. Well, well I, uh, I, 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 worked in, uh, I worked in Honolulu, and then I also went on vacation to uh, Kauai. Uh, so I know t at least two of the islands. <laughs> Yeah. And, of course, the ninth island of our state is, of course, Las Vegas. It's everybody from Hawaii loves to go to Vegas. <laughs> you know how we're Asians, we love to gamble. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, That's the ninth yeah. island. By the Vegas. way, by the way, is the, uh, is the Lepers Island, do they still have lepers on there? <laughs> Say again? Do they still have yeah. lepers on the, on the uh, Leprosy Island? What's the name of that island? Oh, Molokai. Yeah, Molokai. Molokai is at the end of the chain, so... They're not sure. Uh, they've got a hurricane watch on, not a hurricane warning. Or, you know, we have, we're have we on a flash flood advisory right now until midnight tonight again. Yeah, but now my question is, is it still a leper colony? 
Uh, not really. Hansen's yeah. disease, of course, the U.S. Public Health Service has a hospital there, yeah. but there are only about 20 patients. Most of the patients can be integrated into society with medication. Yeah, okay. Which so, island do they do, do they bomb and have all that ordinance on that they don't allow anyone well, on? Well, you know, uh, for the natives, uh, where I'm living right here, uh, we got a lot of unexploded ordnance at the Poakaloa uh, Range at 3,000-foot altitude. You know, the, the military has about... 280,000 acres of fun and games, uh, you know, a uh, uh, military reservation uh, between uh, up at Saddle Road. A couple miles off of the coast of Maui, there's an island. And yeah, it's Maui has all, there was an artillery range just outside of uh, Maui, you know, and they were blasting stuff. But here we are on the big island, you know, we could shoot anything from a 22 caliber pistol to uh, 30, 30 millimeter and, you know, napalm and the daisy cluster, the 15,000 pound daisy cluster. I thought Hawaii didn't allow gun ownership. And if they did, it was very onerous. Yeah. Hey, anyway, gentlemen, I better get out of here. It's okay, well, we thank you. We probably hear the rain and I might lose the signal with Uncle Skype. Uh, yeah. Mr. Bennett, you take care. Thank you uh, so much. Gentlemen, uh, and stay like I said, we're hanging in. You know, yeah. Stay. I'm gonna give up. You know. <laughs> Stay safe. Like, like I said, we're retired but not dead. So I'll chat with you all later. Aloha. James, is, Aloha. James is, uh, is, is your, ra oh, is your radio God. working, James? <laughs> yeah. James, is your radio working? Uh, I I don't know if he heard that. Can't hear me. Yeah. 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 Oh, well. Okay. There Hello. he goes, James Lee, ladies and gentlemen, reporting <laughs> from Hawaii. Okay. That's live good. from a live Hawaii. weather report. Yeah. Isn't that good? Huh? I think he's in Hilo, uh, Ray. Yeah, uh, and, he's near Hilo. Yeah, I, I he's near he's Hilo. Right. Yeah, Hilo, uh, Hilo is like San Jose, California of Hawaii. And supposedly yeah. she's on the <laughs> other side of the island or something. She, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Renee. She, she, she Renee. is on the opposite side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Renee, if you're out a, there and you can hear side. us, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, but she signed off the chat, so I don't know. You know what her situation is uh, but we would love to hear from you okay um where were we uh we were talking about oh yeah sessions and the republicans um we don't really know how you know the republicans are sticking with trump because it's like you know he's the one they brought to the dance uh and so you stay with your date for a while uh, until you realize you're not going to get laid, and then you dump her off at home and go out to the parties. And the but established Repu establishment Republicans like uh, Romney and and so forth, they were so anti-Trump yeah. uh, prior to the election. Uh, they still I'm, are. They still are. Yeah. yeah. But what what you're trying to starting to see are some of the Republicans in Congress st starting to be critical of Trump and saying what's going on is becoming unacceptable. Yeah, well, there's uh, there's some other corruption going on. There's a Republican don't, no, congressman don't in, in Southern California. Don't change the subject. You try to divert from the subject. To, well, uh, you, I'm, you're I was doing, about you're the doing. Hunter... What, you, listen, I know you're only doing the tactics your boy would do. You know, well, no, no, my boy would say, um, uh, you you got small hands. Uh, you know, <laughs> or, or, or flipping flipping should be illegal. No, but what yeah. happens is if there's some heat, if there's some heat on him, like when Amorosa released the book, he immediately got something else going for people to get apoplectic about, so they would get away from Amorosa. I mean, he complete he the the thing that these these news people don't realize is he's playing them like a well tuned violin. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. and they go for it all the time. If they find a story, they should stick with it. And don't let him come up with some tweet today that says something that just drives you crazy and now you're going to talk about this for two hours. Stick with the subject. Stick going after him. You know, keep sticking him. Well, uh, you guys are smelling blood, but there's really no blood in the water. It's just, uh, it's just you know, red dye. I uh, <laughs> well, I, it's everywhere, baby. No, yeah. but, but yeah. even Al Sharpton uh, was out there today uh, uh, talking about uh, that uh, exactly what he was talking Sharp, about. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. Really, whatever he was talking about, he was talking yeah. about it, and that's why you brought it up. <laughs> no, so he was saying something he... negative. He was also saying something about South South Africa 
and uh, the uh, the stuff that's going on. Well, he was trying okay to because they're white people. No, he was trying to explain the situation and what uh, historically it has been in Africa, and that Americans can't completely understand what's going on there if they don't understand the bigger picture of what apartheid was all about and how it affected them socially uh, and uh, where they are today. Uh, it's it, it's a whole deeper story than just the one that that uh, uh, the president is suddenly talking about, and he did that as a as a, a, a to, to defect from you know all, all the hey, stuff. You know, you know uh, if it's the same, it's, it would be just like uh, all the American Indians would come in and take over the uh, radio stations because uh, this country was originally their country and so they throw out all all the disc jockeys and uh, what is that what, what, what are you saying what is that even about well Phil? you know hey they're going are you in trying they're to, are you saying these guys you know farms. how i'm going to make this relate to alex i'm going to say indians come in and take over disc take jockeys take what? Over the reservations, don't they? I think it's yeah here. You know, so, you know, what's happening in South Africa, uh, they're killing these people. Phil, I'm putting you in the timeout box. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm putting you, yes, Jeff. I think Phil has been taking too many pills. <laughs> what is he? <laughs> All right, all right, all right. I'm, I'm ready for this. Are you taking the right amount of medication? You better check your pills, Alex. You know, he's just getting too much blood now to him, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's what it is. The blood's flowing too much to the brain. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. The, uh, you know, what I, I was trying to make the comparison that it, it's just as stupid to take these people and kill them and uh, take their land as it is if the American Indians would uh, uh, decide that they were going to take the country back. They should. You know, you have a people there who for years, for a long, long time, were beset by the whites who took their land, who killed them, who jailed them. And, and that then ended. Apartheid ended, which I think was an amazing, amazing thing that it came to an end. Uh, mainly because the whites realized that it wasn't doing them any good either, you know. Well, the world, uh, and, and, the world and, and came yet, up and, and yet the, and rose the, against the, it. The, the history of that has to be factored into anything that happens afterwards, you know? And, and uh, we have no ability to, I think what, I, I heard uh, Reverend Sharpton, and I'm not a big fan of his, as you know. I think he's an ambulance chaser, personally. Um, but that he was just simply trying to explain that it's very difficult for Americans to understand what's going on in South Africa because they have nothing really to relate it to. They, they, you have to look at the long history of what's gone on there and that this is just part of it. And part of this giving the land to blacks and taking it away from whites is to reapportion the land the way it was before the whites took it away from the blacks. And you agree with that? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, I, I I just think that's crazy. It's 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 as weird as the Me Too movement and uh, judging somebody by their what's, actions. What's wrong 30 with the Me Too? Years ago. What's basically wrong with the Me Too movement? Well, it, because what it does is uh, with the Me Too movement, they're judging people based on behavior that was sort of acceptable uh, at at one time, and now it's. But uh, at the at the core of the Me Too movement, it's it, it's got its heart in the right place. It's just that some people are going overboard with it, and, and I agree you don't with think you. that I, killing whites in South Africa is going overboard. Nope. Uh, nope. Nope. You know, it's it's been hundreds of years. The Dutch why are you bothered settled. by it? Because it's whites. No, I'm. You, I would be bothered uh, by. Were you bothered uh, by? You know, by I saw, wait a minute. I were, saw you, a movie. Were, were you bothered extremely by apartheid? Did you go out and demonstrate against apartheid in Africa? Uh, no. No. But, okay, uh, then don't tell me I, that you know that that you know all of a sudden how, you're caring about the same thing happening to whites. I saw a movie called Hotel Rwanda. And the funny thing was about that movie it was a is hilarious that movie. I had it was a comedy. I had no idea of what was going on and uh, and the genocide that was going on and you know well I did Phil because I paid attention news, to those sort of things yeah but the news didn't really uh, you know mention that stuff very much the Tutsis and the Hutu Hutu yes. Tutsis and the it Hutsis. was all over the news all the time yes. when that was happening yeah wow, I amazing, remember right? just yeah. so the news people could say Tutsis. And Hootsies, yeah. whatever. I don't know, it you was know, a big but, deal. I, 
I, I didn't like that, and I didn't like what was going on in Well, you didn't Syria. like it once you saw the movie, but you didn't like it while, you, you didn't hate no, it while I it didn't, was happening. I wasn't aware that it even took place. And that's what they said during the movie, that there was a, the Western world wasn't really aware of what was going on uh, between those uh, two peoples, and uh, the Hutu and the Tutsis. Uh, you know, it's... <laughs> So you may have been aware of it, but uh, there's a lot of people uh, in the West that had no idea, and I was one of them. You didn't even know about the song "Two Two Tootsie Goodbye." <laughs> yeah, that one I knew yeah. about. <laughs> but uh, Do you know Hootie and the Blowfish? Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, <it> was, <laughs> that I know. You're admitting. You know. <laughs> anyway, so, hello, hello to Jack Bishop. By the way, who has the show right after this one. Yes, Jack. Hey, good to have a chance to drop by. Uh, Phil, did you know who uh, introduced America to t -t -t Tootsie Goodbye? Uh, was that the gold record you got? It was Mr. Hoffman. No, it was Al Jolson. That's right. That's yeah. right. Uh, a white guy. No, he was in blackface sometime. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> yes. A fine job of it it was. It's a step in the right direction. Uh Hey, Phil, this thing about people getting killed, these farmers in South Africa, where are you getting that? He's got it from, from the American the Nazi Party, because that's where the rumors originated <laughs> here in the United no, States. Uh, you yeah. know, I watch uh, CBSN and um, uh, CBS. Yeah, but you didn't and, see it there. The you heard about is, it from Tucker Carlson, is, who got I it from the Nazi sources. I read a lot of um, international newspapers and websites. I haven't seen jack shit about that. Hmm. Are you aware of it? I, I've i been aware of that being hurled around, just like uh, the guys over at uh, National Enquirer have stories about space aliens talking to uh, Democratic presidents, but it's about the same level of truth. Now, right. here's, what, now, now here's what's happening. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, yes... The government of South Africa is looking at land ownership reform in that country. For years, almost a hundred years, outside of certain settled areas, Africans could not own property in the Union of South Africa. Mm -hmm. Just like Chinese couldn't own property in this country until 63-64. Yeah. So that's what's really going on. And, and I'm looking at the NPR website right here, and it says that uh, there have been murders down there for a number of years, but they've been declining over the last 10 years. And this was an article from today. The murders in South Africa of farmers has been declining over the last 10 years. And that usually is a situation that happens when people feel that they are not being treated equitably by the government that's in power. I'm so, I'm so damn surprised we haven't had more of that in this country. Well, you know what's interesting is what you said, Ray, is that this is something that has been going on. And as you say, the according to what you're reading, the statistics yeah. on the number of murders that way have declined. But the way, if you listen to Tucker Carlson and if you listen to the American white power people... They're acting like it's a whole sur It just started happening. Yeah. yeah. According to this, it says um, AGRASA, this organization, the number of murders per year has declined to less than a third the number recorded two decades ago. Yeah. And after diving into decades of data, the BBC concluded its extensive fact check last year by warning against drawing conclusions at all. So Hey, I'll, I'll, gi I'll give you some, uh, some kindling for the fire. Uh, Trump under fire for claim of large-scale killing of white farmers in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Seems that uh, President Trump on Thursday tweeted a disputed, disproven racial myth about the killing of white farmers in right. South Africa. Right. Uh, and then the fact check, uh, 400 white South African farmers murdered last year. And that's uh, Australian broadcasting. Uh, well, that's a lot of farmers. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I didn't. I didn't say that that wasn't true. I just said it's been. I just what I read is that it's, it's been going on. Yes, but it's been. It's less than a third than it was decades ago. You have to remember, this is a strife that was going on between the whites and the blacks in this country for a hundred years. But 
Ray, if this is if you're not listening ago, to me, Phil, you know, I, killed, I just said so. I, I, two I, decades hey, ago. Phil, Phil, look, okay. at, look at me. I'm talking to you. Yeah, you should talk back to me. I'm, uh -huh. I'm asking, I'm saying to you that this has been, you know, apartheid was, went on for how long, Jack? Hundred years, more than that. Oh, yeah. Well, let's see. It actually, apartheid. Started with the Dutch. No, it didn't. Not in the Union of South Africa. That really went into effect in the 1920s, the way they ultimately made it play out. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, hey, according to you, Phil, they're killing that many people every year in Chicago, right? Every week. Uh, okay. But the, uh, you know, so, the... Uh, so your so, only bitch is, is when it's what, black folks killing white folks. As opposed that's to not black. true. You, you can't pull a race no, card on not, this. Oh, the no, reason... Because it's an American card and you've got one in your deck, the, too. The reason... <laughs> the the reason... God damn. The reason that there are fewer whites being killed, there's a, you know, I mean, would you become a white farmer in South Africa if you knew that they were killing them? You know, they'll, they'll go to some other country that and, property, and farm. In most of those cases, the folks that have those farms have owned those farms for almost 100 years or longer. So their families were the and great grandparents and great great grandparents were the ones that well, you know, uh, also uh, you you know Phil, Phil, we don't know in these murders what the attitudes of those whites were towards the blacks what the you know you don't understand the social atmosphere and so because ah, you got you a don't. bad attitude you got to get murdered <laughs> it helps sometimes because sometimes it takes blood to to even out the equations for instance. But, but, but I think the point is, is that it's been going down, and it's like yeah. at an all-time low right now. And Tucker Carlson made it sound like it was getting worse, and that's the point here. It may be an all-time low, but that's because there are fewer ones left to kill. It does. Oh, not Phil, it come does on, turn. come on, <laughs> Phil. I know you people, meant that as people. a joke, but this isn't a joking matter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, you know, no. just if when hey, people, if if so, somebody. I hope if you meant it. If somebody told me situation. I should become a farmer in South Africa, I don't think I. Nobody's do it. asking you to be a farmer in South Africa. We're just saying that there was a situation in South Africa that went on for hundreds of years. It was called apartheid. It was brutal. It was vicious. Blacks were killed like they were cattle. You know, I mean, uh, 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 people are, were a little pissed. You know, so that when finally. Uh, they said, "Okay, we're we no longer going to have apartheid here." That didn't suddenly, ra uh, you know, put out a magic wand to change the social attitudes of the entire country. There was a lot of hatred there. Blacks hated whites for what they had done to them for a long time. They had taken their property. They have not allowed them not to own property. I mean, all those things were going on. You know did that to the Jews in Europe. No, but what you, I'm you saying is, how dare Tucker yeah, Carlson, you Carlson, this you this is the damn country, didn't you? How dare Tucker Carlson, with his white bread attitude, even try to impose what's going on in that country and pretend like it's something that it isn't because he he w read something about it in some white power magazine somewhere, and then the president picks it up and tweets it. Because the only thing he knows about the news in any other country is what he hears on Fox. Yeah. Uh, and, he it, and he tweets it for political reasons, because he knows that a big hunk of his supporters view the world the same way. Yeah. Uh, Including you, Phil. Yeah, uh, I'm looking at the Huffington Post, uh, and they're saying, are attacks on white farmers really racially motivated? And they say, here are the facts. Uh, let's see. Oh, they, you know, every time I look at something in the damn phone, there's 300 ads that I that I, you have to go through. Uh, yes, there's a problem with farm attacks and murders in South Africa. There's also a problem with violence and murder in the country as a whole. All right. So they got a lot of problems. Uh, and I think they've probably got uh, uh, proportionally the same amount of problems that we have if you look at our gun violence. Uh, I find it very interesting, by the way, and you and I didn't get into this last night, and I regret not doing it. When you decided that you would become a police officer, you picked a town with a predominantly minority population to police. They picked me. Well, you took them up on it. Yeah, nobody else asked. 
know, it was, you know, the, only, think, it was, it was the only think, game in town. I think if you were to experience things from the perspective of somebody who was uh, Asian or somebody who was uh, uh, Hispanic or somebody who was black, you would have a completely different take on some of this stuff. Well, you know, I got to I got to see all of this. Uh, you know, it's almost it's almost as if you're floating. Uh, hey, 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 listen, pal. Seeing it is one thing. Experiencing it is another. Yeah, but you get to see and experience what other people are going through. Hey, hey, I'm sorry. It's not the same. <clears throat> not the same. Yeah, uh, I had a I had a call. Where uh, I show up and there's a guy sitting on the sidewalk and he's got a knife sticking in his stomach. And I said, what happened? He says, my roommate stabbed me. I said, why did he stab you? He says, I ate his food. You know, that, that, that gives you pause. I mean, you can't see these things and experience this kind of stuff. And is that where uh, you got, is that where you got all this empathy from, Phil? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a very uh, empathetic person. To begin person. with, I don't know if I would walk up to some guy with a knife in his stomach and say, what happened? He'd probably say, I have a knife in my stomach. Well, he was the victim. I had to take the report, you know, and, and call for an ambulance. And you, and, and, and you pointed out something just a moment ago, because as you know, as most police officers do know, most violent crime is not amongst strangers. It's amongst people that know each other. Yeah. Am yeah, I that's right? That's true. Am I right? True. Yeah, they, you know. But all I'm saying, was, all, I, I think, I think what's being lost here is our president, our racist president. And I'm going to say that he absolutely is a racist. No question in my mind about it. Chose this story because he heard of Tucker Carlson talking about it, so that's where he gets all his news and information. Uh, but he picked up on this story because it was about blacks in another country. That he could I, somehow, I think so. he I could think somehow it's, it's, rile again. It's about genocide. He's a fucking racist. Uh, I, I don't think he can give the guy that label. I think this is genocide. He's a That's racist, is. and he That's is. Genocide. And I'm going to say this outright, Phil. He's not only a racist, but he is a traitor. Well, uh, you're going to lose your credentials too, just like that Brennan. No, I'm not going to lose <laughs> it. He is a traitor. He yeah. has betrayed our country. By doing business with a foreign power, I, I don't think so. We always do no, business with a foreign power. No, you don't think so. Did, did but, but the Clinton? evidence is starting to build up that what went on in Trump Tower amounted to treason. Well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. You want to convict him before there's a trial? No, I don't want to convict him. I want to whip his ass. No, at the post. I don't want to convict him. I want to see him put on trial. Exactly. That'd be interesting. Exactly. Well, I guess they answer questions. Uh, you know, I, this man has I, gone be, be beyond just being a bad president or a questionable president like we would question what George Bush did and things like that. He's become an outright traitor. He is using this country as his personal coffer to try and get wealthier. I, I don't think so. And, and the things that you think you don't are think illegal. So. I, you don't think so. The difference between you and me is I know so. Well, the things that you think are illegal aren't and just just like uh, people are now talking what, what, about the john edwards uh situation you know, who and, cares about john edwards that's a what am i about that's, ism that's it's going case off law to, you know it, 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 it was how that was how that the decision came well, down and well, he was well, acquitted well, he wasn't the, the, trial. the question here wasn't making deals with another government to rig an election but I don't think he made deals with another government to rig an election. I think that our uh, porous. Uh, what uh, if what uh, if Mueller comes out well, comes out with that conclusion? Then what would you think about Trump? You're going to blame Mueller, aren't you? You're going to blame no, Mueller, aren't no. you? No, if if that was the conclusion, uh, I would. Uh, I would uh, think that that's you know he shouldn't have done that. He's supposed to represent us. Okay, well let's himself. let's let's just wait now. I want to see you come here and say I'm sorry, everybody. Okay, and what's going to happen when it, when they prove that he didn't do anything? Well, then let's, I will have to, to say the bastard got away with it. Yes, uh, uh, of Jack. <laughs> but but here's what I find very interesting. You know there were a whole bunch of U.S. senators on the Republican side of the aisle today that had nothing to say about what happened over the last. 24 to 48 hours. Many of them were the same people who 20 years ago were saying, hang Clinton. 
for the for next to nothing. Yeah. They convicted uh, and uh, the and uh, Cohen admitted to and pled guilty on crimes that had nothing to do with Trump. Oh, wait a minute! Wait a second! Oh, 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 you're Bell, wrong. Right? And Bell, these, Bell, you're and, wrong. And, and you're this, wrong. Uh, you're thing probably, you're, you're probably think, paying you're for probably, the hookers. You're probably thinking uh, that's not illegal. No, it, well, yeah, uh, it's, it's no, it is illegal, Phil, uh, under Campaign. certain circumstances, and that's what they're trying to figure out right now. Yeah. He if says in fact, if in, it wasn't a matter that it was his money. If it was his money, first he can't have it, it both matter. ways, Phil. He can't tell the public like he did yesterday that, well, I never heard about this till it was all over with, and then say, well, I use that, I use my money to do it with. You can't have it both ways. And we heard the tape. We heard the tape uh, with him talking about it, so we know that he lied. We know that he knew about it at the time yeah. it was going on, we and know, yet he's lying. It's not illegal to lie to the press. No, that's See, what, what you're being. That's you're what, trying that's to do. What, that's, no, <laughs> that's what they, you're, you're trying. trying no, you're trying not. to hold him to the same standards as if he was under oath, and that's what's called the perjury trap. And that's why he won't testify. Uh, in front you, of you, you are called just, integrity. But wait a minute. I want to say this. We need to quit using the word impeachment, that that I word, and start using the I word indictment, because we have no case. Can't, you can't yep. indict a sitting president. There is no case law about it. Well, if you can, of course you can. Ind yes, you can indict a president. In fact, I, I heard that there, open, it, there yeah. is there is an ability to, uh, there is a provision where you can indict what, a president. High crimes and misdemeanors? Or? But, no, no. But, but you can, in lieu of indictment, that's exactly what an impeachment is, is an indictment. It's just called impeachment because it's right. Uh, uh, well, you said uh, indictment, right? You know, and yeah, then you can then there is a trial it's, it's in there is a trial in the Senate, mm -hmm. and that finds you either guilty or innocent. Okay, but well, he he is effectively he is effectively what's, being put on trial. What's what's going to be interesting is if it does go to the Senate and the Senate maintains a majority and uh, and Mitt Romney is the deciding vote. <laughs> and uh, you know whether or not he gets impeached or not, you know, because his you know that one well, vote. All, is all I'm saying is, even, is that you know, even if he is impeached, he will not go to jail, which is where the bastard should be headed. But yes. we happen to think, for some strange reason, that we can't put a president in jail and not have the country you know, fall he apart. Better, let let me let me just have a last word on this, and that oh, is yeah. that Donald Trump better pray every night. That he gets elected to a second term or dies in office, because if he ever leaves office, there are going to be so many charges thrown against him, he'll spend jail, he'll spend time in jail for the rest of his life. He'll be no, hanging out with Manafort. If if he's guilty, I think what's going to happen is he'll resign two weeks before the end of his term, yeah. and Pence will pardon him. Uh, according to him, though, our entire economy will fall. <laughs> okay, probably will. Our, our entire economy will fall, and we will all be paupers, according to him. <laughs> I because really by the way, will. by the way, he gives himself an A plus. Oh, you know, I, I give him an incomplete. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much uh, for joining us tonight, Ray. And also, it was nice being interviewed yeah. by you earlier today. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, yeah. That's Ray Renata, Renati, uh, Phil Meyer. Renata, thank Renati. you, and thanks to Kevin. We have to thank Jack Bishop, but he just left because he's got to do the show right after us. Of course, Scott Boddicker, Great hit to hear from you tonight as well as Jeff Stein. And Tony, he didn't say much, but uh, always nice to see your ugly <laughs> mug on the screen. Uh, you know, if that Shakespeare had glasses, it would look like Scott. Hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> wave, wave goodbye, okay? Wave, give a wave goodbye. There they go. That's the Citizens Panel, ladies and gentlemen. That's it for tonight with them. Let me just turn off the uh, Skype lines here so that I can... Uh, um, yeah. Okay. So the next show can use the Skype lines, which you you, you have the ability to do. Okay. Anyway, um, let me see. Where am I? I just got to find things here. Oh, there we are. Uh, the next is Jack Bishop, the guy you saw here a moment ago. Uh, he'll be here with the uh, intersection, and then at one o'clock this morning. Yes, it's uh, the connections program. I'll be back again tomorrow night. Uh, Damien's not on tomorrow night, but I'll be back tomorrow night, uh, 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, 
Uh, tell her I love her. Bye, everybody.